Welcome to another devlog for Towercraft, a roguelike tower defense game where you build the map and craft custom towers. This video covers days 22 to 24, where I implement the inventory. The game loop for Towercraft goes something like this. You buy items from the shop. You use these items to craft towers. You use the towers to kill enemies. Killing enemies gives you gold, which you use to buy items from the shop. This loop more or less continues until you kill all the bosses or you lose. The inventory and items in general are an integral part of the game loop. So it was massively important that they were designed well. As I'm sure you know, there are so many types of inventories. The items can be draggable um, on a grid. They can be undraggable in like a long list. There can be limited space. Should the limit be on weight, size, quantity? There can be tabs. You can even have more than one inventory. There are so many different things you can do. So choosing the right combination of those things was very important. I decided to go with an unlimited grid of undraggable items that could be filtered and sorted. What I can actually do with these items depends on two things where the item is, in this case they're in the inventory, and what other menus I have open. In this case, the inventory is open and nothing else is, so the only thing I can do is sell. If, for example, we have the tower edit menu open, you'll see we have the equip prompt. We can hover the item in our inventory, left click, and you'll see that that item is equipped to the tower. What about items not in the inventory? In this case, we just equipped the coolant mod, and if we hover it, you see we have the remove prompt. So by left clicking, it's removed from the tower and added back to our inventory. Since there is no dragging and dropping, this contextual prompt is necessary. If there was dragging and dropping, I guess you could like drag the item all the way over or something, but I just felt like that wasn't necessary. Clicking is just way more easy and frankly, it's more satisfying. You just click and it appears where it should be. As for why I decided not to limit the amount of items the player could have, there was literally just no reason to. The player will be getting the majority of their items by purchasing them. The main limiting factor was their currency. There was no reason to limit how many items they have on top of that. Another benefit of undraggable items is that it'll be significantly easier to implement controller support. This video is not a tutorial on how to make this inventory, but I do want to go a little bit more in depth on how it actually works. I'm in the inventory scene right now, and here is the entire inventory, these two nodes. The rest is for the uh, sorting and filtering UI, but we've got a scroll container and an item grid. That's it. The scroll container will maintain its size, and when the things inside of it get too big, it'll start scrolling. It'll add a little scroll bar that you can use. The grid container is basically just a list of items. We can control how many columns it has, like so. And because it's in the scroll container, when the list grows larger than the size of the scroll container, as I said, you'll see the little scroll bar pop up. Now, if we have too many items, it can get pretty annoying having to like scroll through all of them to find what you want. So I added filtering and sorting. Between the two, filtering was by far the easiest. So let's say I wanna filter out everything but the artillery items. All I do is make everything invisible. So they're still there. The nodes are still there. Actually, I can show you. The items are still there, guys, but they're invisible. All right, so right here, look at that. This item is here, but it's invisible, so it doesn't show up. If we press all again, it becomes visible. Sorting was a bit trickier. With sorting, I had to basically take every item out of the list and then add it back in in the correct order. What made this so much easier is the fact that arrays in Godot have a function called sort custom. Sort custom takes in a function and that function that you're passing as an argument has to take in two arguments and it needs to return a Boolean. It returns true if the first argument should appear ahead of the second argument and false if the opposite. So in our sort inventory function, we remove all the items from the grid. We add them to the item hold array, which is like a temporary holding place. We sort that item hold array, depending on which sorting type we choose. And then we just one by one, add the items from the item hold back to the item grid. It's that easy. What about the items? How, how do those work? Let's go over the item tooltip really quick. When I hover an item, 
you'll see that a tooltip comes up that shows all the info related to that item. Doesn't matter where the item is, it could be in the inventory, it could be in the tower edit menu, that tooltip will still show up. Now, items have a resource on them that stores all of the data associated with the item. So you see we have like the some stats, the ID, the item name, its description, rarity, type, icon. So the tooltip is pulling this data from the item and displaying it. Now, this is everything, but remember when we were hovering, it didn't show everything. And that's because it dynamically changes what is shown based on what data the resource has. In the game, we're hovering the forward V1 turret and you'll see it literally has nothing related to stats. If we go to the forward V1 resource, I don't know, let's change the fire rate to plus 20% and the damage to plus 20%. Let's save and go back into the game. Now you'll see it's getting the data from the resource and it shows the plus 20 plus 20. So it only shows the stats if there are stats to show. What about equipping to towers? How, how does that work? I'm able to left click our mod items. They disappear from the inventory and then they appear over here. Um, so what's actually happening? This mod item that was over here is not the same item that's here. It's the same item, but like it's not the same node. It's not the same scene. I'm destroying it here and respawning it here. All I have to transfer is that resource. That's it, it's just the resource. Now, this does mean that I can't store data in individual items. So if I changed this item stat, they would all change. And you saw that over here. They, they would, if I change the resource, they would all change. So if I run into a situation where I want an item to store data regardless of where it is, most likely I will keep some sort of database that's stored globally that has the item's unique ID and then it like stores data that's associated with that unique ID. So regardless of how many times I destroy and respawn this item, if it has that unique ID, it has that data associated with it. But I haven't run into a situation where I needed to do that yet. So we'll see. That's it for this video, guys. I wanna give a huge shout out to GB. He's a programmer on the Towercraft team for just finding all these awesome icons. I got this massive icon pack from a Humble Bundle a while ago and he went through and found icons that actually worked for all the items we've made. Like and comment for the algorithm and subscribe if you wanna see more. The next devlog is going to be on tower crafting and the item shop, so you don't wanna miss it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.